Hi guys, welcome back, and today we have another one of our 1100 AD online battles with Bok BG, one of the lead mods for 1100 AD. And if you've not seen the previous two battles, we have been bloodied and bruised so far, so check those out in the description down below before coming to this one. But many lessons have been learnt, and we have a completely different army composition for this one, something that hopefully shall work, but you'll have to wait and see. Now this battle is a battle between the men of Scotland and a Viking, of course, a Viking expedition into Scottish lands, although we are fighting this one on the Leicester battle map, so not sure how they got quite down to Leicester the Scottish, but in this universe, I guess Scotland took over the UK. So, uh, let's go through our army compositions to start with. My Scottish army starts with a lot of noble swordsmen here, very, very strong unit, with the main line pretty much made up of noble swordsmen and British swordsmen here. Very good units indeed. Strong uh, sword and board sort of uh, uh, unit, as well as the British axes here as well. Going to do decent damage against the armor of the Vikings there. And with them, we have some British spearmen on the flanks. So I have learned my lessons of not having too many spearmen. We just have a couple of units of the British spearmen on the flanks. And you can see these guys coming with the Celtic designs, even though they are holding the cross up there as well. Um, so yeah, they have some cool Celtic designs on their shields, as well as the British fighting dogs. Let's slip the dogs of war today. On the, on the front line, we have some Highland archers looking cool as hell. Look at them, looking some, uh, wearing some pretty funky uh, uniforms there, but looking good. And on the flanks, we have the British spear cavalry. Light melee cavalry, but ready for the charge. And we have a lot of them. We have six units of these boys. Sorry, five units. And then on top of that, we have the noble horsemen as well. Very strong knight unit in the back there, our general. And on uh, the Viking side, we have some Nordic bowmen from Norway ready to fight against the British here and find new land for the Vikings, as well as some Duguth Swordsmen. Very, very cool looking unit. I love the designs on these shields. Look at those. Very cool indeed. I love that helm as well. Really nice to see. A lot of these holding the center with some house cars on the side. Very elite unit over here, along with some Gadrite Swordsmen. I don't know how to say that perfectly well, but some Gerite, 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 I think it's Gethrite, Gethrite swordsman in, uh, uh, in the back here, his general, very strong melee unit, and some more house cars along the sides, axe-wielding maniacs ready to destroy our lines, along with noble horse cavalry on either flank. So we do have a cavalry advantage, but our infantry might be a little bit behind. So let's click play, and the Battle of Leicester is about to begin. As some uh, unfortunate deer decided that it was time to graze on this uh, this field here, not realizing the thousands of men ready to rip into each other here. That's kind of crazy. I, uh, <laughs> the deer, the deer, just oblivious to what's about to happen, the death and destruction that's about to come. But you can see we are going to be out archered here, but our Highland archers are going to get a little bit of damage done to these uh, swordsmen, the Duguth swordsmen, like we talked about. And he did actually, if you notice, he did actually put some experience on a lot of these troops. It's mainly the Duguth Swordsmen, but I believe a couple of the archers have some experience as well. As a big cavalry engagement happens on the left flank straight away as we try and go for his archers. But you can see um, he has his uh, house cars ready to fight us there. And we're going to disengage from that engagement, of course, because we are not going to be able to destroy his house cars. I really wanted to uh, get his noble horse cavalry into the action there as the front lines go into the fight. Look at that. 
front line charging in. What a fantastic sight to see as we're going to hear the click of Steam doing some screenshots again. <laughs> yeah, you, it wouldn't be an online battle without me clicking that button, would it, guys? But anyway, our Noble Swordsman and our Spearman are going to come around the flank as we see our cavalry going for the charge on the Noble Horseman. Can they catch them? It looks like maybe they can, but the House Carls are going to come into that fight as well and we are doing decently i believe on the front line you can see we're losing a few men but so are they pretty evenly matched really here the axes versus the Duguth swordsmen pretty even overall and you can see my british spearmen fighting against the house calls really not a good match up there getting absolutely shredded by these boys the house calls have only lost one man to the uh nearly 70 of the spearmen there but you can see Fantastic charge right into the back of his archers, getting rid of those Nordic bowmen, uh, as well as fighting his noble horse cavalry. And that's what I really wanted to catch out, his horse cavalry. And as we can see, we're going to charge into that house call unit, uh, and they go actually berserk on us there. So we don't want to fight them too much longer, because they are going to last for ages. Like we saw with our English axes last time, when they go out of control, they go mental. And you can see, on this flank, our noble swordsman doing a really good job against the Duguth swordsman. Uh, as well as his, because uh, I've managed to flank round with my other noble swordsmen fully surrounding these boys. And that's going to allow us to creep up this flank here and try and flank a lot of those other Duguth swordsmen. As we can see, one of my cavalry units routing in the back. These house calls back in control, but he has his Githrite swordsman on the left flank. So we have pretty much, he's dominated the left flank, I've dominated the right. It's pretty even right now as we send our British swordsmen up to try and flank these Duguths once more. And you can see it's really working. Getting them routing straight away. As a great big uh, cavalry battle happens on this flank. As the uh, noble horse cavalry are fighting with our... Uh, sorry, what are they? British spear cavalry. Our light cavalry fighting against the heavy cavalry. Um, but doing decent damage. And you can see it's really worked there. Uh, as well as our general in there as well. And you can see that has worked. And we've got rid of his cavalry. So now we have free reign to charge the enemy. As his Gethrite swordsmen and his house calls are still no mean feat to get rid of those guys. As battle rages in the center still. Uh, and we have fully capitulated that right flank now. As you can see the cavalry done a very good job there. And finally getting rid of some of those noble, uh, uh, noble horsemen. But you can see this is going to be this is going to be massive here. The Gethrite swordsmen and the uh, the um, house calls are gonna do some very good damage against us over here, uh, as my Highland archers still maintain fighting. But the dogs of war have been engaged, and unfortunately for them, they uh, they have all been slain. It looks like here they have not managed to hold on too long. We can see our archers targeting the house calls, which is really good. And we're going to try and take out a few of his archers as well as get some good charges in. He does still have another unit of house calls as well, which is very scary and something we don't want to uh, really engage too quickly because it's not going to be an even fight. I mean, our noble swordsmen can hold their own, but apart from that, these house calls are going to get a really good flank on us here and surround us in the middle. I'm just hoping my boys can hold out just for long enough to get my cavalry back into the action. But you can see we've got more noble swordsmen coming. So it's going to be a bit of a double sandwich here. A double hamburger in the middle here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be two layers on the burger there. We're going to be surrounded in the middle. And then we're going to surround this Gethrite swordsman in the middle as well. So we learned a lot of lessons from our previous few battles, definitely. As we are just running through his archers in the back there with a the cavalry. But we really need to uh, charge the enemy. And here comes the great charge of the Scottish horsemen. And here they come. Glorious charge into the house calls that have gone berserk. Really? Oh, look at that. Bodies flying everywhere. Horses flying everywhere as well. Brutal charge for both sides there, but doing a really good job of doing some damage to those men as the Gethrite swordsmen are still hardly even damaged in this battle. That is crazy, crazy to see. But we can see some of my cavalry coming back, so we've got more chances to deal with the enemy there. Um, and you can see my spearmen are going to try and get into the fight. 
but it's not really going to do too much. But that Noble uh, Swordsman holding strong. And at this point, it could go any way. Just depends on who routes first, who blinks in this battle. And you can see it is going to be the House Gulls. They are gone. They are routing from the battlefield. The elite soldiers of the Viking expedition are going. They are leaving the battlefield. They no longer think that England will be a good place to settle anymore as they run from the battle. But still, the Gathrite swordsmen fighting on, believing and hoping that they can find a new homeland. But no, the uh, noble swordsmen are going to fight them. And our masses of cavalry are just going to shred through the enemy. Whatever remaining enemy there are here left today, there is masses amounts of cavalry left. But you can see the Gathrite swordsmen... Even though they have been fighting for so long. Look how long they have been fighting and how little uh, they have taken in terms of damage. But we're going to get a final charge in and rout the men. That was breathless battle. Breathless battle. But a fantastic one not the, nonetheless. Absolutely uh, really, really fun. And it was kind of a costly victory. Not quite a Pyrrhic victory, but a costly victory for us. And we have learned a lot of lessons from the last couple of uh, ass whoopings we've got from Bok there. So, uh, decent, decent battle. Very good battle indeed. Uh, and let's have a look at some of the stats here. Look at these stats for our horsemen. They just went ham. And that was really the difference there. Even though uh, you can see his horsemen did pretty decently. 75 for that noble horse cavalry. Uh, our archers doing very well as, the, as well. These guys, 131 kills for these Highland archers. Fantastic kill ratio there. British axes doing decently as well. But you can see the spearmen once again really having no impact. One kill for this Spearman and seven for these. 47 for that one, so I don't know how they've got more kills, but I'm guessing that's because they were fighting cavalry. Um, and then, so the British Swordsman did okay, and the Noble Swordsman coming in ham at the end there. 150, 147 kills, and this guy was pretty much half, um, only half the unit died there, so really good, really good fight there. And the dogs even did 100 kills. That is fantastic. But you can see, looking at... Um, Box Army, 231 kills for the Guthrite Swordsman. That is obscene, but not quite as obscene as 283 for this House Gulls and 260. They are some mean, scary units. So by getting them to rout at the end, that really did clutch up for the win for us there. And we have the Nordic Bowmen. They did all right, pretty decent. Probably around uh, 200 kills there between them. So that's decent. And the uh, Duguth Swordsman, in fact, not doing quite as well as my British Axes. So we did manage to uh, hold the center pretty well with the British Axes there, rather uh, than the Duguth Swordsman. But again, 132 for that one. 86, 62, 60. Nothing to be sniffed at. Really good stats there. So overall, a very close, very close battle. And we really probably only won uh, because we deployed a lot more troops uh, than the enemy but a fantastic battle nonetheless really fun i hope you enjoyed that one guys i certainly did uh, and we finally got revenge on bok after our last two destructions by him uh, but check those videos out in the description as well guys so thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure as always i hope you enjoyed this video please do like subscribe all that good stuff it really helps the channel out and i will see you all again on the next video